Okay, let's look at Logisim. It's a logic simulator uh, program that we can use to better understand a couple of things here. Um, one is what they call the uh, analyze circuit function. So let me open that and show you what you can do with that. Um, <clears throat> suppose we had a system with uh, uh, two inputs, like two toggle switches and two outputs. And uh, we have different combinations of inputs that will turn on the outputs. So let's, let's define the inputs. We'll call it switch 1 and switch 2. Okay. Uh, the outputs, we're going to call them out 1 and output 2. Okay. So it creates a table for us. Uh, the switch inputs, we have four possible combinations of both off, one on, the other one on, or both of them on. On the outputs, <clears throat> what we would do is decide how we want them to react. React. So let's say that if, um, if they're both off, let's say output 1 is on. Okay. And if we're in the middle, this or that or this or that, we'll turn on output 2. Okay. So it's kind of arbitrary. It's whatever I decide the system needs to do. I can define it here on the truth table. Um, when I click Build Circuit, it's going to ask for a name for this circuit, so I'm going to call it uh, 0327A. Okay, and there it is. <clears throat> so what this does is it allows me to test it. So if they're both off, zero zero, I'll put one is on. Okay, if they're both on, neither one is activated if it's one way or the other output 2 is activated so so this circuit satisfies a truth table uh, it's a very quick way to generate a uh, a logical circuit um, what what the truth table does is define the input and output conditions so there is a way to solve the truth table to generate this equivalent circuit it's it's a process called k mapping where you um, group together uh, conditions that are changing to identify which type of logic you have to put into the circuit to make it function. Um, it's, it's not difficult to do that. However, because we're not going to spend a lot of time developing um, logical solutions like this, it's really simpler just to use this tool. Um, the trend is has been for a long time to use tools like this uh, to get straight to the result that you're looking for. Uh, there's less opportunity for errors, and the results that you generate tend to work correctly on the first attempt. Uh, so let's see if we could add an additional circuit to that. Um, let's let's go back and add another input, like switch three, and a third output called output two, output three. So <clears throat> the table grows for each additional input. Let's say that output three needs to be on, uh, I don't know, let's just say um, down here at the bottom, all three inputs are on, all three inputs are off. And how about, um, I'll just pick one more just, just for fun. How about this right here? Uh, one is on, two is off, three is off. And I'm going to zero out the other combinations. I'm going to build that circuit. I'm going to call it circuit B. And there it is. So you can see how the circuit grows for each additional input. And I think if I had switch one on, I would have to call that truth table up again because it gets more complex every time. Um, so let's see, output three is on when they're all off, when they're all on, or I have switch one on by itself. So let's, let's see, all off, all on, or switch one by itself. So you can see how it's easy to test the logic, although there's not much reason to do it except just to verify that for yourself that it's going to work correctly. Um, 
the, the major drawback to this type of logic is that it's reactionary. It, it reacts immediately to the input conditions, but it doesn't have any sort of memory to it. Uh, there are some other f features to this software. Um, we have flip-flops. Flip-flops can store data in bit form. Uh, we also have a random access memory here. Um, so, so you can build larger and larger digital systems with this software. Uh, however, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, uh, because the availability of microcontrollers is become so common and they are so very inexpensive, um, b beyond doing just basic digital logic circuits just for the benefit of doing them, um, generally today we would like to go with a software solution. So from this point, you know, the one thing that might be useful to us is the equation, the expression they call it, the expression uh, for the different outputs. Now this is valuable because um, I can use this in the software to give me the correct result. So uh, output one is on, let's look at the table again. Uh, output one is on if switch one and switch two are both off, okay? Uh, switch three changes, but that doesn't affect the output, output one, so we ignore switch three. So let's look back at the expression, not switch one and not switch two. So <clears throat> that means if we invert both of these and add them together, we get these one conditions here. Uh, so the expression is valuable to us because I can write a, a, a software solution very quickly to give me the correct answer every time for the output conditions. So it's not, um, it's, it's not a poor use of your time to go through this process because you do get the uh, expression which we can use in the software solution. Okay. So that's how you use the software. You basically just um, either give it a truth table to work on or uh, you can use it this way where you just drop gates in there and select the number of inputs. Let's say two input. Um, let's add uh, some input devices, a button, a couple of buttons, one for each input and an LED output. Okay, so let's wire these up. So this is the, the other way of using the program where you, you build logic of your own design and then you can go ahead and, uh, and test it. Of course, these are push buttons, so I can't push them both at once. Um, let me just look for a second here. I think I can use the uh, the pen function. Let's drop a couple of those in here. And let's see if I can wire that in. Okay, so the pen function works. 